right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. Very good evening. Good evening, Prof. How are you? Uh, well, for the most part, I'm good. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my sore throat and I uh, still at the tail end of a bad flu. Anybody got the flu? Yes, just got got fever last two, two three days. Yeah, you this know, it started bad. off like that and then it got worse. It's so ridiculous nonsense. So, um, not sure why, but I did go to the get medications and everything, but it's, it's horrible. Um, it's affected my running a little bit, so I've uh. I just went for a good long walk yesterday, but it wasn't, it didn't work at all uh, because the flu, I'm not sure what flu it is and quite a few people are getting it. So just be careful for the rest of you. Uh, try to be safe, uh, stay away from human beings. It's always good advice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So very simple guys, uh, Here, here, here's the thing. What we're gonna do, since there are 300 of you in this class, uh, what we'll do is we're going to look at the first thing we're going to do is look at the question. All right. We're going to look at the question, get an idea, get a feel of the question. And then I'm going to do just one area with you. Just one, just one area. Right. I know some of you are shouting at the back and saying, oh, no, that can't be. So does that mean we won't be with you for long? <clears throat> well, it will be a reasonable time. Right. Uh, in tandem with the fees that you pay. Right. Ah, this is a pay per minute so your money is not much plus your currency is not working so it will it will go pretty fast um that i cannot do much for you all right so uh by having said that let me just see if i can't find yeah that's the trick here to find that document where is it um basically what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to look for your assignment question which is yeah, may see where. Yeah, I think this is it. We have yeah, the assignment question. <clears throat> Can you see the assignment question, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what we want to do. We want to run through the assignment question because we don't want to look at assignment one anymore. We want to look at assignment two because we are action-oriented sort of people, all right? Uh, so the key is, um, so the year 2024 is supposed to be challenging for business enterprise. Identify a business ent entity. Now it can be from agricultural, manufacturing or services, which means it's like any, literally, right? Uh, any of those things in Malaysia and suggest actions to overcome their business challenges. Right? So basically, what are you going to do? You're going to be advising them about something. right? Interview an entrepreneur who has, within the past five years, started and successfully operated an enterprise in one of the above sectors to obtain insights on their business approach. Now, the point is, <clears throat> sorry, the business approach are planned for 2024. It should be 2024, right? Can you please just uh, make that adjustment? Uh, <clears throat> that slight adjustment here for their plan for 2024. Huh? Now, when you read these two paragraphs, uh, one of the first things that enter your mind, uh, or should have, is that it's a small business. Uh, can it's a small business, an entrepreneur uh, running it for the within the last five years, right? Uh, you know, and seemingly, note that I use the word seemingly successful. Smart, uh, if you know, and many of you are smarter. Uh, Kalau, I ask you a question now, okay? Kalafi, bila you jumpa kawan you yang buat business, uh, selalu when you ask him a question, hey, how are you doing? Uh, what is this usual response? Okay lah. Okay lah. Exactly <laughs> correct. Betul. Same with me also. So, every time I meet somebody, they bought business, eh? how's your business? Okay lah. Okay. Uh, okay. It's always okay. Nobody does and tells you that, oh, this is crap, man. I made the biggest mistake of my life. I shouldn't be doing this. There are better things to do. Mm -hmm. Nobody says that. It's very interesting, you know. Uh, you, you're absolutely correct. That's what they always say. So that's why I say when you say successfully operated a business successfully, uh, you, you keep that in mind, right? What do you mean by successfully? What does successfully mean, right? 
because even if you make profit, so-called profits on paper, how's your business? Is it profitable? Yeah, it's profitable. Ah, but what about your cash flow? Right? People owe you money and so you make a profit. But have they paid you? No, not yet. Because the terms is 90 days, I say. One day, Bill must have banged you. Lah. The check has not cleared. The transfer has not been done. Why? Because, oh, my chairman is overseas for two weeks. I hope you don't mind. Now you can wait. See, if you've been in business, and I have, that is the bitter truth. That is the bitter truth, right? And I, when I teach something, I always like to uh, assist my students to understand the real stuff, right? Not the ones in the textbook where they tell you all sorts of things and the business plan is all very clear and, and, and black and white. No, no, it's not so simple, Okay, so this is you keep that in mind, and I'm sure some of you have some experience. Then we say, uh, prepare a report based on the requirements stated above, uh, and the, the the discussion points should be included. These are the points in your uh, in your report. Again, I mean, very easy because I've broken it down for you. The Magna, you cannot go wrong. Yeah. Uh, you are in that ballpark, uh, and then as you do your assignment, pun, it's very easy. Uh, as you're doing, some points you have. Some points you don't have. You need to investigate, kind of check. Uh, you can leave it and go on to the next one. Fill up what you have and then coming back again, coming back again, right? Maybe some parts you even, even do some reading maybe to check something and this and that for that particular industry. Then you can come back again. So this way I find that a lot of my students, especially those who are working uh, and those who might be interrupted, they have a guide that they, they can follow. Uh, in, and then they are quite successful in what they're writing. So introduction, background of the business and background of the industry. Two different things. Uh, background of the business is what the business is about and what is the industry about. Uh, this part, many students make the mistake of being very brief. I say, cannot. This part, you must be very clear, thorough, and spend a lot of time explaining clearly what the business is about. Uh, because generally, when you think about it, walaupun, if you say this business, uh, oh, ours is the aircon repair business, for example, and the other person also has got an aircon repair business, is it the same? Yes, on the face of it, it's the same. Tapi, who are their clientele? How many workers do they have? How long have they been in actual operation, right? What is the star rating on the web page? Hey, people rate dia macam mana? Is it four star, three star? It's all not the same. Uh, so a lot of students uh, make that mistake of doing part A very briefly. Uh, when you do that already, it's very weak, your answer, because you cannot justify a lot of other things. Huh? There's no alignment. So just uh, take a note of that. And understanding the industry, maybe you understand the aircon business, but if you understand the industry as a whole, right, the services industry, is it easy? Is it hard? Is it hard to get workers, for example? Right? Are wages going up? All those things, industry things, you must take into consideration. Bila you not discuss background in the industry, one of the key instruments you must use is Porter's Five Forces. So you say, oh, this industry is very competitive. You say, who believes Gaddafi? So what? Encik Gaddafi didn't write uh, uh, 10 different textbooks on this. <laughs> so, so you must use instruments, kind of SWOT analysis, maybe use Porter's. Right? Maybe you use value chain analysis. Ah, this is You go back to that. right? So you find that when you study entrepreneurship, it's not just one thing. Like, it's a lot of things that bring in, as long as it helps you achieve the target of answering the question. So that's number one. A, <clears throat> B, main target market of the business price. Yeah, who are they targeting? Competitive advantage of the business enterprise. Why the target market will buy from it instead of competitive? This is very important. Competitive advantage, uh, one of the key instruments you use is money. So Bunny will talk about whether it's valuable, whether it's rare, can it be copied, and, and so on. So you can use that one. Uh, I'm not saying you can only use one, but you maybe use whatever you're comfortable with, uh, but that serves the purpose, and that's fine. Okay. And indeed, discuss external forces. Again, what are the main things that are affecting it externally? Here you can discuss pastel as well, political, economic, social, can all, all this you know already, guys. Identify the business challenges that the enterprise faced in the last three years. Again, depending on the entrepreneur, what do they say, right? One of the key things in these last three years will, of course, be COVID, Akurasa. Right now. Ah, COVID for sure. You know, very sad, huh? COVID, a lot of businesses. I was speaking to somebody the other day. They said, oh, that business was doing very well. And COVID came, did I I felt a bit sad lah, because they were 
you can you can rasa uh, the feeling of people kan they were looking forward they were excited they work so hard you know and then covid comes along and then there's nothing they can do because sometimes they don't have enough resources yeah uh, they don't have enough resources they got no choice lah you know it, it's tough that way uh so the opportunities for such business in the near future what are the opinions and views of the entrepreneur again you are talking to them what actions are they taking to overcome problems right so identifying what the problems are and how are they planning to overcome that what are the csfs uh, critical success factors that you consider essential to ensure that the business enterprise uh, success and future growth that you consider uh, now here comes your point of view how you see it, what you recommend okay then finally your final this is for the uh, particular business that you're talking about then in j you talk about overall recommendations and conclusions like you know uh, then you can have an overview uh, discussion and that uh, and of course the rest <clears throat> so that's about it so in overall it's not too difficult but the important thing is to be careful about just picking points from the textbook or from chat gpt or something and then having those points go if you are able to look at whatever business your friend is doing and think about it genuinely even a little bit half an hour of thinking you'd be surprised ah huh? tomorrow you can actually help your friend also uh, that's the there's a beauty lah that is when you do the, the the job you're not just doing it for the sake of the assignment yeah the assignment is great but then you find that suddenly hey you can also help uh, your friend because you bothered to think about it can <laughs> nothing wrong with right? Uh, but uh, personally, I have talked to people. You know, one I tell you one real problem, lah, guys, with this sort of situation, lah, is when I try to help somebody with a problem, lah, they will come to me. Then I say, "Okay, I tell you what, tell me, uh, so that I can understand. Maybe I can give some points." Can they tell me only part of the situation? Lah. Ini masalah yang besar, so you have to be careful. They tend to tell you when you ask them a question. They say, "Is your business doing well?" They only tell you one part of it. If they're doing doing badly, ah, uh, what's wrong, ah? Uh, then they tell you that one problem that they have. But actually, it's it's all linked to other things as well. The tip uh, of iceberg, ah, bro. Eh? Abadu. They just tell you the tip of iceberg. Yeah, because yang masalah dia. How would you analyze if you only got half the picture? It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. I only show you this part, and then if you do the analysis, masalah dia, your analysis will be wrong because you don't know the whole picture, yeah. and very few of them I notice. And I know this from practical experience, uh, because I was doing some uh, actual work. I told you before with CIMB, and we were doing it well. Many many vendors are. Uh, mm, until we have to go physically to the ground and speak to them and speak to their customer and speak to their workers and everything and to get a proper understanding. Otherwise, you won't get. Uh, you will only get the picture that he thinks he wants to tell you, uh, and he wants to, you to solve that problem. But that problem is interrelated to so many different things. Okay, just keep that in mind, lah. That means uh, in, when you discuss your recommendation and all, maybe you can have some suggestions, perhaps. Huh? So that will make uh, the interesting thing. But this assignment is very easy to make it your own, right? and each of you will have a, such a different assignment from a different point of view and everything. Right? As long as the rationale is there, it's pretty good. But like I said, use it as an exercise and opportunity to see maybe you can help your friend. Maybe you can give a a, a different viewpoint. Not to say they have to take your advice. That be you know. Uh, it'll always become useful, and I think if you use it that way, then you will really uh, gain a lot. So that's about the assignment. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, which brings us to the topic today. Uh, where is that? Mm -hmm. Ah, this is the topic. Ideas to enterprise. Managing resources. You see, yeah, guys, here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing. Um, how do I hide this thing? Uh, hide video panel. Okay. Oh, no. Not hide video panel. Sorry. Uh, 
I want to hide this other panel. Hide name, hide disable. Another name. Hide floating controls. Ah, I almost got rid of all of you. Uh, anyway, so the point is, guys, guys, are you all listening or not? That's my only question. Yes, 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 of course. I mean, yes, just trying course, to... Bro. I, when they say, of course, that's when I don't believe them. Now. You know, some of them are thinking, why is Burger talking so much? It's late already. Uh, guys, I'm not kidding you. Gaddafi, Ivy, Chan. Just give me, give me my watch, my clock. Uh, let me see. Just give me. 13 minutes. Give me, huh? 13 minutes. <laughs> That's your favorite time, sir, from last time. <laughs> How many minutes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? How yeah. many? How many? 13, 13 one, three. Uh, no, no, don't try to exaggerate, okay? Never that <laughs> short, lah. You first are very smart, no? Then no way you can do anything in 13 minutes, lah. Okay, 13 minutes for you to fall asleep. No, no, listen. 23 minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> Guys, I am so not kidding you. 23 minutes and 14 seconds, if you just pay attention, lah, it will change somebody's life out there. If not your own, it will be somebody else's. This is a momentous occasion. I'm telling you, just cut everything out from your mind. All right? Forget the fact that you're hungry or thirsty. Just focus. <laughs> Chan, don't cheat on the timing. I tell you, <laughs> 30, mana the 30 minutes. I hope top management is not listening. I get into trouble with things. Say I meet my class in 13 minutes. You know, as it is, I'm already in trouble because it's so short. But the important thing is we are effective, right? Very effective. Okay, guys, here it is. You see, one of the biggest problems, I can tell you, lah, any three of you talk to anybody, lah, you know what's the biggest problem, Masala, dear? They don't have enough resources. Oh, all kind of problem, especially financial resources. Oh, if only I had more money. <laughs> yeah, you and, the, you and the 8 billion people in this world, my friend. But guess what? In the next, okay, now 22 minutes, I will solve it for you. You can thank me later, All right? So resource management is key, okay? Firstly, let's take you back to what we discussed last week. We talked about Marco Polo. Yes, that's right. The same guy who went around and traded and all that. He was supposedly the first entrepreneur. Good for him. 1271, 1295. And how did he go about? Whoa, he went in the ship like this, All right? Total Johnny Depp going on right here, man. All the sea monsters, everything, full package. I told you this, there's an actual ship like this called the Vasa Museum in Sweden. When you go there, do stop by, right? So the problem with all these small businesses, uh, masala, masala, is what if you don't have any resource strengths? Uh, see, it's easy to have somebody who's got all the uh, talent, uh, working for him, he's got all the money and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fine. But what if he doesn't have enough? Okay. All right. Today, to start companies, very easy. La. Very easy. Why? Because you just need a web address, right? Online also, you can start up a company and then in 18 months. But the problem is many of this will not last, right? Easy to start, but hard to sustain. Why do they fail? Well, there's management issues, not enough money, human failings. Right, partner ran away, la, this and that. You know, don't have qualified people, don't have people with a vision, things like that. Resources are what when we say resources, what do we mean? We mean human resource, social, financial, physical, technology, and organizational resources. So resources are many. So the, the opportunity for being short of resources is many from many angles. But oftentimes, when you go and talk to a small business guy, you know what his main thing he say? He say it's money. Uh, okay, my, never mind, that's fine, okay? So, the key to understanding the problem is to understand that before anything else, it's about the idea, the business idea, right? Uh, is the business idea robust? Is the business idea something that adds value? 
right? Is it filling a gap? What is this business idea doing, right? Or is it just another business? As an art, that means a me too, or on what, I boom what, uh, or is it adding something new? We have to think about that, okay? And a lot of times, many of the small business, the big problem is they do no reputation, no track record. Can you starting while well, one year, two years, what track record you have? You have nothing. The bank also don't want to see your face. In fact, most of your friends will stay away from you as well. <laughs> oh no, I think I know. I don't want to be your partner. You know, it's tough. It's a tough thing. It's an uphill climb. Okay, that's what we need to understand that backdrop. Okay, so then the question which we which I post in in the initially, which is how do we maximize limited resources and stuff? How does a small business do it? How can it overcome this hurdle? All right. So let's think about it. Okay, when we say that maximizing limited resources and standing out, standing out. What do we mean by that? Standing out like this. This is standing out, isn't it? Big different, right? Why? Because you are not Pepsi Cola or Coca Cola. You can spend billions on advertising, right? Or not you only know three people: Gaddafi, Chan, and Hairi. Three customers, and they also cheap customers. How are you going to survive? Sure, you will fail. Okay, so this is a problem. Is this standing out? Yeah, yeah. Something different, isn't it? All right. Yeah. Is this standing out? Yep. Yeah, but the point is, if he was standing next to the wall, okay, it'd be just like anybody else. To stand out, basically what we're trying to say, is difficult. It's tough. Okay, it's tough. Or another way is to find the purple cow. Find the purple cow. What color are cows, Kadafi? Uh, black and white. Black and white, almost Frisian. Harry? It can be brown. It can be brown, exactly. But as you're driving along, let's say Chan is driving happily on his way near UPM with a lot of uh, fields, and suddenly he sees a purple cow. cow. What will Chan do? Yes, he will stop his car and block a lot of cars. And then he will get out. And what will he do when he sees the purple cow? Take a picture. Take a picture. That's right. And he takes a picture and he sends it to all his friends. And it goes viral because why? In fact, knowing Chan, he probably take a selfie with it as well. <laughs> For his five minutes of fame. So it goes viral, isn't it? Because it's different. It goes viral. Yeah. Keep that in mind. I'm going to introduce you to this guy, right? I don't know if you know him. His name is Otto Frederick Roweda. Now, what's the big deal about Roweda? I'll tell you. This guy came up with the idea for a bread slicing machine in 1912. Guys, let me ask you something. Or did you know that before 1912, there is no such thing as sliced bread? Do you know that? You go and buy bread, it's like this, right? Roti can. You, you take it for granted. Ah, of course. But you know, before 1912, if you tell people, hey, can you get sliced bread? You know what's their reaction? Even though it's so logical, their reaction is like this. They'll say, are you crazy? They tamas ota that he can buy sliced bread. They will buy the bread from the baker, take it home, and they will slice it. They will never buy the sliced bread from the baker, right? And everybody said that. Crazy. People will call you crazy. In French, they'll say, il faut être fou, which means crazy la in French. Okay? So, what does this guy, Rowenda is actually, interestingly, a jeweler. He's not even a baker, but he's a bit of a smart guy. Like, he loves to make things. So, he invented the bread slicing machine. That means a, a machine that would cut bread. You've seen it in supermarkets and so on, right? But the thing is, when Rowetta went to the baker and said, hey, guys, look, guess what? I have a bread slicing machine. Would you like to buy one? You know, what's their reply? No, no, no. We don't sell sliced bread. We sell the bread as a whole. There's no such thing. There's no need for that. So what did he do? They didn't want it. He went to look for his friend, baker, Marion Frank Bench. This lady who worked at the Chili Court Baking Company. Because Kawan there, he said, hey, please, la, I, I invented this. Try this. La. So she took it. And you know what? The results were astounding. 
bread sales at Chili Court went up by 2,000%. Why? Because suddenly the ladies realized that if I buy this bread, already sliced, if I go home, I have one less work to do. Can? Because it's already sliced. Uh, so from there, it, this idea, after 1912, that people would buy sliced bread. It's a very simple idea, but people never accepted it. Interesting, isn't it? Did you find it interesting? I thought it was very interesting. All right. So, so the, the question we ask is, who are your non-customers? Who don't even consider your product, your service, or whatever as something that they can use? Uh, this is something for us to think about. Non-customers. Okay. Now, where does this concept or idea come from? Well, from many places and key places. Like A good example is Blue Ocean Strategy. Right? If you look at Blue Ocean Strategy, what do they say? Look for non-customers, look for refusing non-customers, and so on and so on. What's the opposite of Blue Ocean? Red Ocean. Red Ocean. Why Red Ocean? Because people die there. Red Ocean. People die. Blue Ocean is new. right? Refusing non-customers. People who don't want to use your product. Looking for that gives you a whole new marketplace. So ideally, it should be that, okay? And who came up with this uh, 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 concept, basically, who popular, popularized it? Professor, Professor Chan Kim, okay? Have you ever been to a lecture by Professor Chan Kim? Right? Yeah. If you go, he's a very interesting speaker. He's a very small man, very, very small, in a big stage, you know, and with a very energetic fellow. <laughs> <laughs> it was good listen. Uh, so he talked about this and he, he promoted this concept, right? But in order for you to look for your non-customers, guys, one of the key things you will notice is the product or service, the existing product or service will need higher customization generally. It will result in higher margins and greater customer loyalty. That's the difference. Uh, so you see, in order to go for that market, and there's certain things one has to do, right? I give you a perfect example to explain this. A perfect example is what? Starbucks. Starbucks, perfect example. Gaddafi goes, Dulu, he has a coffee for two ringgit 50 cents from any store, anywhere, right? Now, he goes to Starbucks. Oh, but he's paying 15 ringgit for more or less the same coffee, maybe I don't know, but they use a hey, hello Starbucks user separate language customization. Kind of people say, you know, I want a skinny latte to go. Wow, it's a new language already. Customize because low fat, damn cool, lah. you know, everything has got a very, very customized too. And on top of that, uh, to make Gaddafi happy, they even write his name there. Though they always spell it wrong, but still they write his name. What's your name, sir? Gaddafi. <laughs> Come. Fifteen dollars you're paying. They so they make high margins, and you know what? Here's the best part. The people who go to Starbucks keep on going to Starbucks. They are known as I call them Starbuckins. That's right, a Starbuckin. So, so you can see how. One can, small businesses can think about this thing. Can you think about these things? Can you think in that direction? Can you make that happen? Can you look for that non-customer, right? So the success of uh, products or service, sometimes people have a tendency to think about well, high technology, la, it must be different, la, I must be a Elon Musk. La. No, the trick or oftentimes is whether your idea can spread or not. Uh, your idea can spread or not. I give you a very simple, real example. Once I remember some time ago when my kids were young, we were driving, you know, on the way to Kuantan. So along the way, we stopped to at Kuala Ganda to go and see the sanctuary for the elephants. Have you heard of Kuala Ganda? Yes, yes. Uh, Chan 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 never lie. He wanted to go and visit all the overseas countries. The beautiful things in the country he didn't see. Hari, have you been to Kuala Ganda? No, of no, course not. No, no. You, you guys, if I was the Prime Minister, I'd make it the compulsory before you do your MBA, you must go to Kuala Ganda and see the sanctuary for elephants. La. Baby elephants who have lost their parents. Ah, good. Now you're feeling bad, right? Never mind. So anyway, the point is, as I, after that, we are driving. And so suddenly we are hungry. And this is not near an R&R, &R, you can stop and eat something, right? This is a kampong. Kawasan kampong. Kan? 
So I said, I just drive. And then suddenly we saw one makcik selling nasi lemak in the stall. Just at the side there. So we stopped lah because the kids are hungry. We, oh my goodness gracious, the nasi lemak is so delicious. You know, It's really, really good. But then again, who are the customers there? Only us at the time. And you can see that there are very few anybody. People don't know. The makcik nasi lemak is so good. But nobody knows about it. You see, if people know, boom, everybody will be going there. So spreading the idea is important, right? So idea diffusion, guys. Spreading your idea, and that can give you an opportunity. Okay? If you look at, who's this guy? Richard Branson. Richard Branson, that's right. If you recall, Richard Branson, who, uh, what airlines was he running? Virgin. Okay. Legend. That's right. And he used to do crazy things, right? And gain, gain a lot of attention, like, do a lot of crazy stuff, this guy. Uh, who's this guy? Bill Gates. That's right. Bill Gates, what did he do? How did he spread? He he let people use Microsoft for free. Free. Free and Empire all... as well. <laughs> What's that? Free Empire as well. Pirate as well. Whatever, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he just gave it buggy some more. Then one morning, one morning, he woke up and said, oh, by the way, there's this little clause here that says that you got to pay a small license fee. I hope you don't mind. And all you buggers got stuck. Lah. Because, and then Gaddafi said, oh no, I refuse to pay. I don't want to pay. Fine, you don't pay. You don't talk to anybody. Lah. You just play your computer games on your TV and that's it. You can't. So basically, spreading the idea is very important. And a lot of stuff are happening like that today, like Facebook, for example. Right? Uh, Facebook is free and Facebook is everywhere. Right? So spreading the idea, getting people uh, on board right, is, is key. Right? So if you look at the TV industry model, what do they do? You buy advertising, you distribute your product, you sell products, and you make a profit. Right? Those days, you know, that's how everything was done. And in some ways, it's still the same. Right. If you look at products that people uh, keep on selling and repeating, a good example, uh, uh, shampoos, soaps, all these fast-moving consumer goods are uh, all being sold that way, isn't it? But that model, that approach to selling something like this, uh, which usually only the big business could do, that old model is broken. It's no more applicable, as it were. Right? I'll give you an example. If you look at Dove, have you heard of this brand before? I'm sure you have. It's everywhere, right? So, 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 right? So, so. They sell a lot of things, my friend. They spend <laughs> up to $50 million. Uh, they sell things that, and they try to get my attention to interrupt me, for example. Okay, How do they spend that money? Well, they send flyers, Kiwi commercial, uh, adverts, uh, whatever, you name it. Okay, Why? But you know something? Me, myself, I just ignore it. And I'm sure you do too because you don't use the can. Because you all are like me, macho. So you use Adidas. <laughs> so, right now. See, so much money they spend and it all falls on deaf ears. No, we don't even bother. So where does the poor small businessman stand? Okay. You look at Coke in Japan. Coke Japan comes out with a new product every three weeks. You know, Japanese market is such a competitive market. Huge. It, big companies are coming out like this. How? Where does a small company stand? Okay, that's the point. I show you a, an example of a magazine. This is a magazine called Water, right? Have you read this magazine, uh, Chan? Harry? I don't know. Let me rephrase it. Have you read anything in the last one? <laughs> so bad. See, uh, Chan is laughing at you, Harry. Just because I asked a question like that, I laugh. These are all not your friends. Just remember. None of these two chaps here are your friend, Harry. Don't worry, I got your back. So my point is, this magazine, which you have not read, is actually a very successful magazine. This magazine, guys, this magazine, instead of talking about everything, it focuses on one thing only, and that's water. Water in any form, water in the drain, water from the sky, water in the, in the reservoir, water anywhere. It specializes in water. Now, if you were in the water industry, you would not only read this magazine, you would even subscribe to it because it's a specialized in that area. And it doesn't matter that you and me have not read it. They are successful. It doesn't matter. You understand? Water. So, I introduce you to another guy with a bit of a bad hairstyle. This guy, he's, he's called 
he has bad hairstyle. I'm, I mean, sorry. He's called Nicholas Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus, long time ago, 1473, 1543, right? Now, if you're anything like a histo histor historian or a historical buff like me, you'll find that Copernicus was actually a very interesting guy. Why? Because Copernicus, bad hairstyle and all, was actually a smart guy. He made the astounding claim that the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way. Aha! Copernicus said that the earth revolves around the sun and not the sun around the earth. Let me ask you, logically, and I know that none of you here are scientists like me, if I told one morning I woke up and I said, Gaddafi, I want to know, I want to know this question. Does the earth revolve around the sun or the sun revolve around the earth? So, Gaddafi, after some thinking, what does he do? Very simple. He goes stand in the middle of a field. Middle of the field. And what does he do? He just observes the sun. The sun goes up. The sun goes down. The sun goes up. The sun goes down. What will your conclusion be? What is your conclusion? The sun, the, the sun is moving. moving exactly. Around. Yeah. Exactly, but Copernicus, bad hairstyle and all, was a thinker and a bit of a scientist. And he discovered that, no, 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 it's a banana. We are the one moving around the sun. Now, you're probably thinking, why are we discussing that? Let me tell you, those days uh, where people pray to the sun god, uh, moon god, all kinds of things. Uh, if you went and said, uh, told them this, when they believe the other way around, they would kill you. They would kill you for their religious beliefs. They would kill you because you 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 cast an aspersion upon the sun. You know, those days. Don't you love those historical ignorant times? It's wonderful. Not much has changed though. <laughs> so anyway, point is, people are full of themselves. People are full of themselves. Right? It's all about me. You know why people thought that uh, it was actually the sun revolving around the earth? Because you, if you look at yourself as the center of the of whatever, then everything revolves around you. Lah. Right now, more than once, I'm sure, either a family member or more likely your wife would have said, yeah, yeah, it's all about you. <laughs> So sorry. Don't mind if I share my heartaches. But yeah, it's all about me. P the people are like that. People, the nature of people is that, guys. Well, I've got news for you. And the news is this. Consumers don't care about you at all. I'm sorry to say. All right. That's the first lesson you have to learn. Any business, the consumer doesn't care about you at all. Keep that in mind, right? Why? Because they have many choices and very, very little time. A lot of choices. If uh, if a Chan wants to buy a, a notebook computer, wow, when he owns his uh, TV, he can see some advertisements maybe. If he goes outside the door, he sees a huge uh, signboard. He reads something on the internet. He sees this... Uh, uh, advertisements, advertisements on computers. So choices are many, but time is short. And so what do they do? You ignore things. You ah, you just don't bother, isn't it? And that's the truth. Okay. In a world with too many choices, too little time, the obvious thing that people will do is ignore stuff. So you've got to get that right. Right? Consumers don't care about you and they're going to ignore stuff. Okay. So what must you do? To solve this problem, you must find the purple cow. Stand out from the herd. That's the key. Let's, let's discuss that a bit. The thing that decides about what gets done, what gets purchased, or what gets built is, is it remarkable? This is a very important question. Is what you are offering, the service, the product, whatever, is it remarkable? Okay. If you look at movies, come on, you guys know all the movies, like Avengers, like Jackie Chan, Upper. Great movies, right? Even the top selling movies are changed every week. Right now. They can't be there forever. And, and in that environment is so challenging, the same for other environments as well. That's what we're saying. 
right? We are now in the fashion business, no matter what we do for a living. That is the truth. You are in the fashion business, right? Don't think that, uh, oh, my product is so good and this and that, it will last forever. People change. How many of you uh, change your handphone because your handphone really, really quiet, cannot work? No, isn't it? Because you saw the one plus one, then you say, oh, Oppo, ah, Chan is trying to put up his hand. Nah. Chan, <laughs> Chan is declaring openly his poverty. <laughs> the only person with poverty is me. Okay? You have no right. <laughs> clothes, for example, clothes. Uh, when did you change your clothes because it was torn? No, isn't it? You, you, because you felt like buying something now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. You're not you're, you're not convincing any of us. Sir, me... Microsoft expeditious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lah, because you bought an expensive uh, whatever from Microsoft. Yes, sir, I wear it now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, here's a story. There's this company. This is a real story. This is this company in the. It was in the U.S. And they made chairs. They made all kinds of chairs. All kinds. That means they make chairs for classroom, for theaters, for meeting rooms, for anything. Any kind of chairs. So it's a big company. And they were doing very badly. They're going to almost going to go under. All right. Then the boss said one day, no more. We are not going to make all these so many chairs. No more, no more. We only going to make one kind of chairs. And that is meant for the boardroom where the chairs will be set upon only by CEO, MD or chairman. That's it. That means you get rid of everything, just do one thing. And they branded it and they called it Aaron. And you know, the boss was so convinced that whenever he met somebody and somebody says, oh, I'm an MD of a company. Oh, that's very good. But by the way, what chair do you sit on? If you mention anything less than an Aaron chair, you know what his reply was? You're not really the MD if you're not sitting on an Aaron chair. Because an Aaron chair, he began to make chairs at a really super, super high end. right? So from this, he went to this. And you know what, guys? It became a status symbol and the company became a billion-dollar company just by doing that, okay? So so what companies normally make, the problem with companies out there, and you will find many of them, they make average products for average people. They ignore the geeks or the lackers and they just aim for the mass. I, when I see students who, do, who compete in, in entrepreneurship and everything, they show me the business ideas. Oh, we will get 10% of the market share, which is really large, and we'll have so much sales and so profitable. And immediately when they say that, I know they're going to die. Right? <laughs> it's very easy to assess that. Right? So they ignore the geeks and the lackers. But let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, so the geeks and the lackers, who are these geeks and lackers, and why will they listen to you? All right? identify the geeks and lackers, let me show you, okay? Guys, if you look at the product life cycle, this is the product life cycle. You've seen this before, everywhere, right? Uh, and so, when we say geeks, geeks are the people at this end. You know, people who want to buy the latest handphone, the latest notebook, right? Some people, if you if you read the papers, they, they sleep overnight outside the store, so that when the store opens, they'll be the first one to purchase the product. Those are geeks. They're so crazy, they bring to pay a high price. That's just the way it is. Then on the other hand, you have what? Lackers. Lackers are people who don't care. People who don't care. My mother is a good example of a lacquer. My mother has a handphone. She doesn't know the brand. She doesn't care. As long as she can speak on the phone and she can send some SMS, she's happy. Right? Even you, you go and tell her it was an old phone. She doesn't know. She doesn't want to know. Okay? These are lackers. But there are many young people like that as well. Some people are not, you know, they're not geeks. They just use something and they're working. So these two ends of the market become very, very important as well. Right? Why? Because it's less competition. If you look at Singapore, Singapore has got a handphone they designed specially for the elderly market, right? Where the, the wording are bizarre, the number is big and got a special button for emergency to press and everything. They designed that because nobody's doing that, right? The lackers, right? So these are two different types of people. If you look at this word, this is called otaku. Do you know what otaku stands for? It's Japanese not. It's not yeah, it's a Japanese word indeed. Yeah, yeah. Otaku stands for passion or obsession. Otaku. So you want to you want to address the otaku in people, you know, and go to the otaku. A good example. 
if you look at this this car, for example, this car may cost a hundred thousand dollars. The speakers may cost eighty thousand ringgit, <laughs> because why? The guy is crazy about sound, isn't it? There are people like that, you know, who are crazy about sound, right? You want to know about sound? You go to uh, Garden. Garden. There are a lot of uh, these uh, these uh, music tech shops. The smallest item there will cost you over hundred thousand dollars, right? But sound. Now, a guy will. If this guy is interested in, in in sound, you find that let's say if Hairi is selling speakers, who should he talk to? Should he talk to someone like me who doesn't care? I buy a car and the speaker is there, and that's it. I'm done, right? Or should he go and talk to this guy? Whatever speakers Hairi is selling, if he talks to this guy, this guy will listen to him or discuss it with him. Even if he doesn't buy, he'll be interested. Why? Because he's crazy about sound. There are people like that, isn't it? Who are crazy about something. I'm sure you've met some of those people who are willing to spend a lot of money on something. Right? So what we're saying is speak to people who will listen to you. Don't waste your time. If Hairi is selling expensive speakers, he comes to speak to Chan or to me or to Gaddafi, he's wasting his time. Yeah, maybe as a friend, we might listen to him, but we're really not keen. And we don't know. And to a large extent, we don't even want to know. Right? Then there are other type of people as well. Right? Some people, what are they crazy about? They're crazy about lights. What is this guy crazy about? What is he crazy about? Uh, lights. Lights, yeah. It, it, it's crazy. Is this your house? Me. Not crazy, sir. Not crazy. Not crazy, sir. Uh, not crazy. He, he, very smart guy. I heard it's... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. This one, this one, very smart. Yeah, very smart, very smart. Yeah. Okay, Mohamed for Gaddafi's got one mark. Chan's got one. <laughs> Hi, you're not, you're not <laughs> winning this game. <laughs> uh, what I know, this, this guy is very rich, lah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> The two don't care about the Gaddafi and Chan is coming from Hairi only. I think <laughs> before Hairi, eh? we are poor. <laughs> so, if you talk to me about lights, I'm crazy because I got lights from Europe, from China, from you name it, lah, you know. And I'm always looking at what is the latest thing that's happening. So, if you're interested in lights, you should, if you're going to sell lights, you're going to have to speak to me. Okay. So, the point is, guys, share your ideas with people and consumers who are listening. Whatever it is. So the if you're a small business, you have to pick and choose who you speak to, isn't it? You don't speak to everybody. Anyway, you don't have the resources. People and consumers who are listening. Okay. I show you what is this about, huh? What is this? Big bike. How Big bike. Oh, motorbikes, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what you think. Ah, look at this. Yeah, there you go. Isn't it beautiful? Hey, hello. I'm talking about the bike. Which one? Not like, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not talking about what's on the bike. John. Too general, uh, bro. Yeah, organize your gaze accordingly. <laughs> yeah. Too general. <laughs> you fellas, I can't do anything with you. Ah, but you're wrong. Harley Davidson is not a motorbike company. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because Harley Davidson is selling not a bike, it's selling an experience. They're not selling the mechanics, the bike. No, 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 no. They're selling an experience. For example, if let's say Chan goes to the Harley Davidson company and Chan has got $180,000 in his pocket and then he sees a bike and they're selling the bike for, say, what, $220,000. So Chan will say, hey, I got one hundred eighty. dollars uh, can you give me the bike for 180? Yeah. You know what, what Harley will say? Nope, sorry. Then Chan will say, oh, but I can get a Ducati for that price, a BMW for that price. No, still no. You know? Because it's not just about the bike. It's about the experience. Let me explain. So what they say is, what we sell is the ability for a 43-year-old accountant in black to ride in black leather, ride through small towns and have people be afraid of him. That's what they're selling. So Mr. John Smith, who's an accountant wearing his tie, Monday he goes to work, sit in one corner. He's right. He's doing his work. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When Saturday comes, oh, this is John's time. Mr. John Smith, Mr. Nobody Knows Who I Am. Now John Smith will fold up his sleeve and get onto his machine and then have people be afraid of him. 
And what does he look like? He looks something like this. Wow. Yeah, he's riding through the town. <laughs> you see? So when they sell the bike, they're selling you the jacket, the club, right? The group. That's what they're selling. That's the value. You understand? But sir, that's a Yamaha. Is this a Yamaha? I can't, I can't see. How do you know yeah. that? It's a Yamaha, sir. How do you know? Uh, yeah, I'm into bike. <laughs> Come again? I'm into bike. How, how do you know it's a Yamaha? You There's no Yamaha word here? The rear suspension, the engine, the clutch. Yeah, oh, so that means you have a, you have a Harley Davidson? Uh? I don't know. Uh, you see, uh, see, uh, the same guy uh, who showed us a uh, uh, poor T-shirt and all that nonsense. I tell you, uh, I'm telling you, uh, terrible. Uh. So anyway, the point is, that is the whole idea. <laughs> That's the whole idea, right? To to enjoy that experience so that people pay more. So successful entrepreneurs concentrate on the user experience, not just the pixels. So that's what the person who's got limited resources should try to do to sell much more than that. For example, if you handle a customer, right? Because you are one entrepreneur, you can give personalized service to, the, to, the, to your customer, isn't it? You can. The big company cannot. The big company will say, can you please dial, press one, press two, press three, now press hash, now go back, put your eyes in a long story, and you can never get to speak to anybody, but you can offer customized service, and you can be different, and you can charge differently as well, right? So these are some things for you to think about uh, vis-a-vis -vis the assignment, guys, right? So how can your company provide that experience to stand out, to be that purple cow? Let me tell you another story. This story of Mr. Edwin Fanek, president and CEO of Ferrari China. Now, you know, when China, China, as you know, is doing very well, it's growing, and a lot of multi-billionaires in China. Now, uh, when Ferrari set up there, this guy, Edwin Fanek, became the CEO. And everybody would go up to Edwin Fanek and says, hey, Fanek, you know what? Uh, you got a damn good job. Uh. You're the CEO of Ferrari China, you know, China with almost 300 over a million people are multi-billionaires. They can all easily buy your Ferrari car. Uh, what a wonderful job, isn't it? Fantastic. But you know what? I tell you what Mr. Fennec replied. Okay, He said, we want to sell one less than demand. What does that mean? There's, there's always a need creating no. a market that is shortage, more That's value. Right. More value yeah, more. exactly. So in other words, even though there are 300 million multi-millionaires in, in China, not everybody's going to get a Ferrari. You're not going to get it, right? Because Ferrari themselves will make a certain model, maybe about 150, right? And so there's a queue and they probably interview the person who buys the car as well before they sell the car. So there are a lot of other factors that come into it. Okay, so so you can see that how he creates that premium. So if you are a small business doing a certain service, service you can be different, isn't it? You don't have to just because people come to you, you can say, "Oh, yeah, I'll sell you something." No, maybe you say no. Maybe you say no. No, not today. Sorry, I've got a long queue. I'm only one person running it. I can only attend to three persons a day. I've got sixty people waiting. Call me next month. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Something to think about. So the point, right? So if you look at many things out there, guys, if you look at DSLR cameras, for example, they are old, old style, very complicated little things. You know, if you if you actually bought this, and I bought this many years ago once, uh, nonsense lah. You have to go for classes. You know, they have classes that that will actually train you. But now cameras are like this. It's intuitive, it's quick, it's fast. You can take a picture, send it straight away, right? The experience is the brand. It's become different, you know, how people interact with your product, what they get out of it and so on, right? iPhone, for example, right? Uh, it's user interface. When iPhone first came out, the fact that you could swipe the screen, wow, it blew people's minds, isn't it? Right? I'll tell you one interesting experience. When I was upstairs one day, this was way back many years ago when the iPhone was around, just came out. And I was upstairs 
watching TV. And little girl, you know, three years old, somebody's kid from downstairs, la, parents la, do not look after the kid, came upstairs to my upstairs portion. And I've got a huge flat screen TV, right? So the little girl suddenly walking into the, I said, oh my God, who's this? You know, and she comes in and she looks at my screen. Little girl. And she walks up to the screen. You know what she does? She starts to swipe my screen. She swipes <laughs> Because I think she plays with the parents' phone or up like that. Those days, you know. And she thinks, so you see, so it's it's the user interface, you know, how how easy it is, right? Let me tell you another story, guys. This is very interesting. It's a, it's a company called Dutch Boy Paint. This is in Europe. Dutch Boy Paint was a company that was a very large paint company, but doing very badly. So one day, I, I don't know if any of you have painted in your homes. If you buy a Tin, tin of paint is very big, very heavy, and then you use a screwdriver to open it, and it's very messy. La. I never like to do it. I always leave it to my wife because it's hard work. Uh, I advise you to do the same. So, anyway, so the point is, the point is, the point is, uh, this person in Dutch Boy Paint went and created this new, almost like plastic container with a handle. And the cap was a twist on cap. That is, you don't have to use something to open it. No, you can just twist it on airtight. And it's got a drip free nozzle. You know the nozzle? Nozzle at many times, you know, if you buy a good one, you pour the whatever and you put back, there will be no drip. A drip free nozzle. So the person invented this for the company and gave those suggestions. And then they were they begin to make paint in smaller quantities. So it's easy for one person to carry. And they were able then to sell direct to the end user. And it saved the company. It actually saved the company. Because now the margin was higher and they could sell direct to the end user. Why? Because they, by thinking about what is my customer's pain? What do the customers face when they want to do paint? Heavy pain, difficult. Then if you don't close properly, the thing will be get hardened, all kind of nonsense. Okay, whereas this one it made it so much easier, so it saved the company. So this is an example. So basically, if we if we think about what our customers' pain is, so that small merchant or whoever or that uh, small business has to think in those terms, right? And that becomes very interesting. So it saved the company indeed. So you don't have to be outrageous, guys. What you have to do is figure out what people want and then give it to them. Uh, and many large companies struggle with this, isn't it? Customizing is not easy. Why? Because they want they want to go for that, uh, what should I say, um, that uh, red ocean where all the big companies are competing and they can compete. But the smaller guys, they can't. So these are some of the options that they have. Okay. The new model, guys, is called the purple cow. All right. Purple cow is very useful. Now, if you've studied marketing and so on, you've studied product, pricing, promotion, and all the PPPPP, right? right? I'm sure you've attended some marketing classes. But did your market lecturer teach you about the purple cow, the, the P? No, isn't it? No. In fact, your lecturer should be in this class, but never mind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> Truth, lah. But good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the next P is a purple cow, right? Very useful, very powerful. Brown cow, you've seen it many times. Simple, everybody's doing the same thing. That's it. Purple cow shines. It's remarkable, right? So how do you make that product, that service, whatever you're doing, become that purple cow? And that's the whole idea to succeeding, okay? So how to raise a purple cow? There are many ways. If you read the text and anywhere, they'll say differentiate your customers. That helps, all right? Pick an underserved niche, create teams, have email addresses, the Pareto principle, you know, do unsafe things, right? Think small rather than big. Uh, and basically tell the truth to their customer and be differentiated in that sense. Right? So those few key things, uh, none of these are like the, uh, what should I say, the, 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 the magic pill. No, they are a combination of things. Looking at your particular industry, your particular product, how should you do it? You decide, you understand? So this is how you want to think about it. So guys, essentially, you got to be innovative. You got to be remarkable, right? You got to think, right? Uh, and remember, you cannot be remarkable by following someone else who's remarkable. <laughs> That's not usually the way it works, right? You want to try and come up with new ideas, having the thoughts uh, as to how one might do that, 
especially if you understand your market, that can do, be done, right? So that's it, guys. The purple cow approach is today's way to manage your resources and exactly as I planned, exactly the timing and we have ended, right? Uh, much to the disappointment of Mr. Chan, who thought it would be finished in 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> that's a policy. <laughs> so guys, guys, the, my point is this, guys. We read the question and now we looked at this one. So if you've reflected and thought about you know, small businesses, and you can see there are many, many points in this as well, which you can then use and to try and see, besides other points, I'm sure some of you have other ideas and how to uh, think about uh, your assignment, to think about your recommendations and consider the problem, okay? Right, do you think that was useful? Excellent, huh? Yep, yep. Good. Thank you very much. All right, so that's it. We're done for the day. That's enough. That's a lot to chew on, a lot of interesting things, and it'll, it'll lead you to very nice, sweet dreams. <laughs> so, sir, sorry, sir, one question, sir. Sure. Uh, going back to the what, 10 things, I think slide number 74. Mm. There's one that I would like to ask you. Number five, mm. do unsafe things. Yeah, basically, do unsafe things means don't follow the norm, right? Do something different. Right, uh, because that is where your non customers are, isn't it? Selling to somebody who people say, Ah, no, lah, those people don't use this product. Hey, let's try, let's ask, let's check, you know, ah, do it like that. Lah. That's what they mean. Mm. Okay. Not? So, yeah, so, good question. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sure, sure, no worries. So, it's all good, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm quite confident you do. I tell you honestly, even without these slides that I've shared with you, I'm quite confident that you do okay. But what, as you, you notice every time, I'm trying to push you a little bit more to think a little bit different and to try something different. Uh, so if, as if you do that, then it becomes very interesting. So in your assignment, if you can, any of these key points, try and apply it to an actual situation to your the friend that you are you are asking these questions. Huh? And then maybe they get some ideas as well. Be very interesting. All right. So hopefully you 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 gain from that. All right guys. So if there are any other questions? If no questions we are good. But just remember next week we we revert back to Sunday. Okay, okay for sure. All right. Uh, 9 30. No All 300 of you. <laughs> <laughs> Was it 9 30 or 8 30, sir? 8 30. Oh, oh, sorry, 8 30. Yeah. Can we do 9 30 instead? No, I don't know, Chan Chan. I was just checking <laughs> to see whether you're listening. And I noticed that only Chan is listening. Gaddafi and uh, Hairi are not listening. You guys have lost the mark. Please listen. At least Chan uh, you know, is listening. Even though he's rich and he's got so many Harley bikes. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm not sure about the Ferrari. So you got one, isn't it? I'm sure you. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> You see, uh, Garafi, very bad. Uh. Never mind. One day we'll have coffee at his place in his porch. Sure, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's the, uh, okay, guys. So if that's good. Uh, we revert back on Sunday to the to the class. Because they, the reason why they don't want us to, they, they mentioned that they don't want to change the timing if possible. Uh, the university has mentioned the timing. I don't know what the issue is, but that's it. Lah. So, but never mind. Uh, I always tell people that if you wake up early in the morning, then you are early to life. Lah. So you're getting up early to life. So that's really interesting. So if uh, you have to get up early, uh, a little bit earlier, 8.30 is not too bad. And you'll have a full day ahead of you, right? And you use that day to forget the experience of me. <laughs> not that, sir. It's not because I cannot wake up. Because my... Uh, my son's uh, swimming class changed to 7 to 8.30 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, 7 now, to having a big headache, uh, how to find a transfer for him? Change the coach, la, baga. change the coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sir, the coach is good. <laughs> oh, then I'm no good. La. Ah, no, no, that's, that's why, I, I mean, I mean, that's why I'm finding to... transport for him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, sir. I'm here. Trap question, though. Trap question. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I think I transport for him. <laughs> this, this, you're digging yourself a hole. This conversation is not going well for you. So. <laughs> it's been recorded, so. Whoops. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But no, like, seriously, guys, uh, yeah, more on a serious note for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, 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 personally, I would allow it. 
if we make it, I don't know lah. Then we have to tell the SKC guys. And then uh, the university just came up with a notice yesterday again, you know, mentioning that once the class has been set, uh, not to change that. So this is my problem. Personally, no problem. if you ask me 9.30, I'm more than happy. I got no issues at all. You know, uh, just I hope you understand lah, you know. Um, no worries, sir. Uh, so I will find a transport yeah. for him. Uh, because I want to attend your <laughs> class. <laughs> You see how the guy is like, <laughs> bagus lah ni. They're doing unsafe things, eh? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Tapi lah, I take everything with a pinch of salt lah. No, 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 I have to believe. Okay lah, guys. Thanks for your attention. I appreciate Thank it. You, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir.